So the Samsung Galaxy S8 is finally here, but how does that stack up speed-wise to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus? So let's take an in-depth look at the Snapdragon 835 and how it compares to the Apple A10 chip. Processors are actually pretty close. I mean, one's an octa, one's a quad-core, but numbers-wise, they're literally almost at the same level here. So let's see how capable the new Snapdragon 835 is. Now, I did a real-world test, basically stuff you're going to do all the time, programs you're always going to use and basically closing them and then relaunching new applications and so on. Now, starting from a baseline with all the apps closed, I went ahead and started a timer. Jumping into Snapchat, I loaded a snap, something you do every day. You go into Instagram, check a post, wait for it to load, go take a picture in the camera, and then to the Maps application. The iPhone's reduced animations in 10.3 certainly help with this speed test, but overall, it seems to load applications faster. Now, getting into the game, I'm loading up Minecraft first. The iPhone does have an advantage here as it seems to be more optimized for game loading. I don't really know why, but it does seem to run those a little bit better. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is no slouch. I mean, it's really not that far behind, but it just seems when doing these sort of tests, the iPhone has the advantage of loading times. Now, it's only one game behind now, but seems to be two now as I have already loaded Asphalt and Grand Theft Auto. So if you play a lot of games on your iPhone and load times are important to you by two seconds, the iPhone seems to have a small advantage here. So it seemed like in the earlier tests, like daily tasks, you know, it was just as optimized on the Galaxy, but they're now on the same application. I just exited that one on the iPhone going into poker. This is an online based app. These are both connected to the same network. So there's really no difference here if you're worried about the speed, but I'm already on to Netflix, which loads incredibly fast as well as booking a ride with Uber. And I'm actually finishing up Zynga poker right now on the Samsung Galaxy S8. The iPhone is just powering through these applications towards the end. So Yelp, even if you wanted to write a review, jump in real fast, do that. And for the last test on the iPhone, I'm already exporting a four minute 4K video clip. So this is compiling inside of the application and then I'm gonna export it. It's no easy task and there's a lot to do. Still way behind on SoundCloud on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and moving on to Yelp now. Finally, one more and I'm at the video shop. So with the very same video file, a little bit over four minutes, 4K, 30 frames per second, I'm gonna go ahead and compile it and export it on both devices. And this is the part where the iPhone really started to show off. I've actually shortened this video uh, because I didn't want you guys to sit through 10 minutes of it just rendering, but it managed to pump out that 4K, 30 frames per second video in half the time it took the Samsung Galaxy S8. You know, as a result, it got a score of a little bit over three minutes where the Galaxy got over seven minutes. So overall, before that video export time, they were pretty close, but then that part just mess the Galaxy up. Now repeating this test for round two, I didn't actually clear the app switcher, so all the apps technically were open in the background, and I noticed on the Galaxy, they all reset. For whatever reason, I think the video export just demanded so many resources that it closed all of the apps in the background, and I'm pretty much starting from scratch. So the iPhone is much, much faster as the apps were already loaded and just needed like a second refresh, and they were good to go. So as a result, I got a very short time of about 47 seconds on round two, whereas on the Galaxy, without doing the video export, it took over a minute and 45 seconds. So definitely quite the difference between these devices. I don't know if that's an optimization thing on the Galaxy's part. Maybe I just used too many resources with the video export, but I'm not saying it was bad. It's just, you know, the iPhone was a little bit more efficient at reopening applications. And I just wanted to make a disclaimer. Uh, most of you guys probably won't be experiencing this behavior. Using the Galaxy S8 normally, you know, apps reloaded where they were every single time I would reopen them after doing something else. It's just when you're doing something so intense, that seems to reset to what was going on before. So just don't want you guys to get uh, the wrong idea. I'm not saying the Galaxy is slow whatsoever. Now, wrapping up this real world test, I wanted to get a little bit more specific. All right, so let's go ahead and do a startup test. So these guys, you know, have just performed the test. They have all the apps open in the background. And let's go ahead and power these guys off. Turning them on in three, two, one and they're off. So Samsung Galaxy S8 running Android 7.0 on the left and iOS 10.3.1 on the right. 
Very curious decision on Samsung's part to ship Android 7.0 and not 7.1.1 or something. Anyways, the iPhone is first to start up here, even with a passcode, considerably actually. So quite the difference there, although we only start up our phones maybe like once every few days, if even. Uh, so not that big of a deal here. Now let's load some of these games up individually. I know I did them in that test, but that's more of an overall speed test, not individual apps. So let's go ahead and run through those. So getting into Snapchat here, Instagram. So about the same there, camera. Oh, about the same, Galaxy's a little faster, I think. Uh, maps, Galaxy, Photoshop Express iPhone. This one has like a little bit of an interesting lag when opening. It hesitates for a second. Minecraft, especially when opening larger games and stuff. Oh, that one was actually faster. Nice. Mario Run. Hmm, this one seems to be loading a little faster here. And oh, actually about the same time. Asphalt 8. Yep, so iPhone 1 here considerably. Seems like the larger the game is, faster the iPhone loads it, it's Grand Theft Auto, and got to click skip for the thing. So yeah, iPhone loads the main screen a little faster, but this one actually loads the actual game faster. Zynga Poker, the, the iPhone takes that win just by a few seconds. So cool, that is, that's actually quite fair. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a lot faster in some tasks. Seems like the bigger games, it loads a little bit slower, but overall, very, very capable device here. Let's load some web pages here using the default browsers. So the default Reddit page. Oh, the iPhone wins that one. And uh, CNN.com here. The iPhone, wow, considerably faster. And they're on the same network here, so not using uh, LTE. These networks aren't connected to anything. So let's try one more, All right? Apple.com, here we go, three, two, one. iPhone just a tad bit faster, let's try Samsung.com. Three, two, one. And actually almost the same there. Browser performance seems to be a little bit faster overall on the iPhone, still pretty fair on both here. And uh, let's go ahead and get some real numbers here. So let's run through Geekbench. Results are in, wow. Multi-core beat the iPhone 7 Plus by a very, very close 12 points. Single core is almost half. I mean, it's a little over half, but dang, quite the difference there. So this thing does, you know, focus on efficiency with more cores. And for the applications that do support it, certainly you're gonna notice that difference there. So single core score, of course, is behind. A lot of apps still use single core for most of their functions. So that's really gonna be important on the iPhone. But overall, I am surprised. I did not expect the multi-core to be this big. So there it is for the numbers in Geekbench. Let's take a look at Antutu here on the Galaxy and the iPhone. And it looks like the Samsung Galaxy S8 actually outdid the iPhone 7 Plus. 163,734, wow. So let's take a look at the detailed here. 3D score is higher on the Samsung Galaxy. The UX, the RAM was actually less efficient than this one and the CPU itself was lower. So the graphics chip in this thing is incredibly capable. That's amazing. And I also wanted to do a screen unlock test. So to unlock the phone using the fingerprint sensor on this guy, and this guy with screen off and on. All right, so this is a little difficult. Man, this really shows me the flaw here. It's so hard to perfectly locate uh, the groove on the back of the phone. I'm sure I'll get used to it the more I use the phone, but right now it's a little frustrating. So I'm gonna try and get this right. One, two, three. Oh, this one has a shortened animation, so it seems to jump in a little bit faster here. One, two, three. Yeah, a little bit faster. Let's try screen on here. One, two, three. Oh, wow, that's definitely much faster with the screen on. So fingerprint sensor is pretty fast. And again, it was never slow to begin with on the S7. So very, very good stuff, super fast there. So guys, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is in some ways better than the iPhone. I can't really give you guys any real conclusions here other than to say that the iPhone still has the numbers 
when it comes to the CPU and in many areas, it seems not to reload applications as much as the Samsung Galaxy S8. So it's certainly a little bit more usable in day-to-day -day activities, but the Galaxy S8 kept up and even overtook the iPhone in certain areas. So I'm actually very impressed with it. Thanks for watching the speed test guys. Stay tuned for the camera and full review soon. Peace.